All right, let's pray before getting into God's word this morning. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you that it supplies us with what we need to know about how much you love us, about how you are there for us, about you hear us when we call out to you. Lord, we ask that you would be with us now as we get into your word. We ask that by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would open up our ears, that you would open up our hearts to receive your word. Lord, we pray that you would work through not only the sermon, but also through the testimonies that we will hear. We pray that you would give these men strength, that you would give them courage, and Lord, that you would speak to us through them. Lord, we ask these things in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, last week, Pastor Rich preached on the pretty much the first two chapters of Job. And in these first two chapters, we saw that Job has some pretty bad stuff happen to him. He loses all of his family, he loses all of his belongings. Um, He gets sores all over his body. And so now he is sitting here um, and he's in a time of mourning. He has three of his friends come to him. um, And when they approach him, they don't, it says that they don't recognize him because of um, how much Job is weeping, how much Job Job is mourning, and how um, possibly how disfigured he was because of the sores. They didn't, they didn't recognize him. So after a period of seven days, seven days sitting there in silence, letting Job mourn, mourning with Job, Job finally opens his mouth. And he opens his mouth and he says some words that are pretty striking, words that are pretty intense to our ears. So I'm going to read to you from the book of Job. This is chapter 3. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 26. This is the whole chapter. So if you wish, I invite you to turn in your Bibles to Job chapter 3. If you have a pew Bible, it's on page 791. If not, the words will be up on the screen. Hear now God's word to us. After this, After these seven days of mourning, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. He said, May the day of my birth perish, and the night it was said a boy is born. Well, that day, may it turn to darkness. May God above not care about it. May no light shine upon it. May darkness and deep shadow claim it once more. May a cloud settle over it. May blackness overwhelm its light. That night, May thick darkness seize it. May it not be included among the days of the year, nor be entered in any of the months. May that night be barren. May no shout of joy be heard in it. May those who curse days curse that day, those who are ready to rouse Leviathan. May its morning stars become dark. May it wait for daylight in vain and not see the first rays of dawn. For it did not shut the doors of the womb on me to hide trouble from my eyes. Why did I not perish at birth and die as I came from the womb? Why were there knees to receive me and breasts that I might be nursed? For now I would be lying down in peace. I would be asleep and at rest with kings and counselors of the earth who built for themselves places now lying in ruins with rulers who had gold, who filled their houses with silver Or why was I not hidden in the ground like a stillborn child, like an infant who never saw the light of day? There the wicked cease from turmoil, and there the weary are at rest. Captives also enjoy their ease. They no longer hear the slave driver shout. The small and the great are there, and the slave is freed from his master. Why is light given to those in misery, and life to the bitter of soul, to those who long for death that does not come, who search for it more than for hidden treasure, who are filled with gladness and rejoice when they reach the grave. Why is life given to a man whose way is hidden, whom God has hedged in? For sighing comes to me instead of food. My groans pour out like water. What I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quietness. I have no rest, but only turmoil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Thanks be to God that he allows us to have this pain. Well, I'm going to read this one more time. I'm going to have a, an image projected on the screen. This is a, a painting of Job from a man named Leon Bonnet. I think I pronounced that right, but it's from the 19th century. And as I read this, I just want you to focus on Job. Imagine that he is saying these words. Maybe connect them to with where you're at in life right now. May the day of my birth perish. And the night it was said a boy is born, well, that day, may it turn to darkness. May God above not care about it. May no light shine upon it. May darkness and deep shadow claim it once more. May a cloud settle over it. May blackness overwhelm its light. Well, that night, May thick darkness seize it. May it not be included among the days of the year, nor be entered in any of the months. May that night be barren. May no shout of joy be heard in it. May those who curse days curse that day, those who are ready to rouse Leviathan. May its morning stars become dark. May it wait for daylight in vain and not see the first rays of dawn. For it did not shut the doors on the womb on me to hide trouble from my eyes. Why did I not perish at birth and die as I came from the womb? Why were there knees to receive me and breasts that I might be nursed? For now I would be lying down in peace. I would be asleep and at rest with kings and counselors of the earth who built for themselves places now lying in ruins, with rulers who had gold, who filled their houses with silver. Or why was I not hidden in the ground like a stillborn child? like an infant who never saw the light of day. There the wicked cease from turmoil, and there the weary are at rest. Captives also enjoy their ease. They no longer hear the slave driver shout. The small and the great are there, and the slave is freed from his master. Why is light given to those in misery, and life to the bitter of soul, to those who long for death that does not come, who search for it more than hidden treasure? who are filled with gladness and rejoice when they reach the grave? Why is life given to a man whose way is hidden, whom God has hedged in? For sighing comes to me instead of food. My groans pour out like water. What I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quietness. I have no rest, but only turmoil. Well, I doubt that I need to explain to you what's going on in this chapter. Well, this man, Job, this man that's known by us for his perseverance and his suffering, he is crying out to God with his intense anguish, with his intense pain. Well, here is a man who once had it all, probably one of the richest men in all of the world at that time, in all of the land, but he has it all taken away. His livestock, they're all, they're all either stolen or they're burned up. He loses all of his sons and his daughters in one day when they are tragically killed by the house that falls on them. Well, Job himself, it says, has sores all over his body from the crown of his head down to the sole of his foot. To top it all off, Job's wife seems to turn against him encouraging him to take the easy way out. She says, Hubby, let all this be over with. Curse God and die. Oh, this man Job is crying out in his pain. He is exhausted from the trials that have come upon him. Now in the Christian faith, we tend to hold Job up on a pedestal. Whenever we or somebody who we know are going through some intense times of suffering, our thoughts may be turned back to Job. Job, this man who once had it all and then had it all taken away. We saw it last week how Job responded. When everything in his life is ripped out of his hands, Job prostrates himself on the ground before the Lord in worship, and he says, The Lord has given me all these things. The Lord has taken them away. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, when we look at Job's perseverance and his steadfastness in these times of trial, it's hard for us to hold next to that these words that we hear from him, some of these raw emotions, Job's curse and his lament. Well, first we look at his curse. Job curses the day of his birth. He says, let that day be darkness. Now, we, this takes us back to the first chapter of Genesis, to the story of creation when God brings order out of chaos, when God brings light out of nothing. He brings light out of darkness. God says, let there be light, and there was light. Job says, no, not so on my day of birth. He says, let that day be darkness. Let's cross that day off the calendar. Let's imagine that that day never happened. He's essentially saying, if I hadn't been born, then I would not be experiencing this intense pain and this intense grief. Maybe after realizing that this is futile, this is impossible for him to go back and take away the day of his birth, he turns to lamenting his life. He says, why am I still alive? Why do you give life to those who desperately want to die? To those who long for death, those who search for death more than they search for a hidden treasure. All I want to do is die and escape this pain. I just want rest because this pain is just too much for me to handle right now, Lord. So we see Job as this model for suffering, but we can't make sense of it when we read this chapter when Job cries out with these emotions. Well, maybe some of us think that Job is sinning with these words of intense pain and grief. Maybe we think that it's inappropriate that he's expressing himself in this way. But the Lord himself God, if we fast forward to the very last chapter, not once, but twice, he says, my servant Job, he said, here is a man who has spoken rightly about me. This is a guy who's got it right. God does chastise Job. He does correct him for, for speaking things that are well beyond Job's knowledge. But never once do we hear Job cursing God. Well, in the New Testament, James, author of the book of James, he commends Job to his readers as an example, as a witness of godly perseverance. Well, yes, we might be uncomfortable with these feelings and this voice of intense pain and suffering and grief, but never once are we led to believe that Job has sinned against the Lord. So what does that say to us? What does that say to us? It says that we are allowed to have feelings. It says that we are allowed to have pain, that we are allowed to have confusion. Not only are we allowed to have them, but we are allowed to give voice to them. Well, in the Bible, nearly half of the psalms that are written are psalms of lament. 50% of the 150 psalms have some sort of lament in them, giving voice, giving deep voice to this expression of pain, of sorrow, of grief. Because in this life, There are times where we are confused. There are times when we go through intense pain. There are times when it feels like God has lost all control. When it feels like he is no longer good and he is no longer sovereign. But God, the Lord of the universe, is big enough to hold our pain. He is big enough to hold our questions. His hands are big enough to hold all of your grief. And maybe there's no better place that we see this than in the person of Jesus, 
who is like another Job. A man who once had everything, living in perfect fellowship with God the Father and God the Spirit. Jesus Christ, God the Son, willingly giving that up to live down here as one of us. He didn't take the form of a king or somebody of high honor. No, Jesus Christ came and he took the form of a servant as a slave. And Jesus Christ went through the pain of rejection from his family and friends. Jesus Christ was ridiculed for nothing. Jesus Christ went through suffering. He went through torture. They nailed the guy up on the cross. They killed him. He knows what it is like to suffer just like Job. But Jesus Christ, because he is God, he is well acquainted with our suffering. He is well acquainted with pain. He sees it. For those of us who are overwhelmed by life, who are exhausted, who are confused, Jesus Christ knows your pain. And what does he say? It was in our call to worship this morning. He says, Come to me. He says, Come to me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden. He says, Come to me, and I will give you rest. Jesus Christ was crucified, died, buried, given resurrection from the dead, and ascension into heaven to defeat the sting of death, to free us from the bondage of sin, and to give us new life. He sees our hurt. He knows our suffering. And he invites us to come to him for rest. Now that's about all I'm going to say. Because this morning we have the opportunity to hear some testimonies of some men who have experienced suffering. Testimonies of some men who have experienced pain. Maybe it's pain that they've brought upon themselves. Maybe it's pain that's been inflicted on them at the hands of others or just circumstances that are out of their control. But we are going to hear of how God has met them in their pain, how the Lord has transformed and is continuing to transform their lives. 